big shot is big shot is big shot Welcome to the Morning Cup of Culture show. I'm your host, Brooke Black. This is a community of inclusiveness, diversity, and belonging through social justice, culture, and music. So excited today. I have a very special guest, very talented, super, super, super down for our city in Salt Lake, DJ Juggy. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Can I get a quick intro from you? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm the heavy hitter DJ Juggy. Um, yeah, heavy hitter, Shea 45, Slap Lake City, um, LRG Clothing. I don't know if I'm missing it. Coors Light. LRG Clothing? Yeah. Do you have a clothing line? No, they're, um, uh, they're actually like a worldwide uh, clothing brand. You're a brand ambassador. Yeah, So absolutely. that's the unboxings that you do yeah. on your IG live. Mm-hmm. Um, what, where can we find you on IG? Uh, you can find me everywhere on social media at DJ Juggy, DJ J-U-G-G-Y. How did you get your name? Um, from the, um, the uh, cartoon uh, Archie's. Oh, there's Juggy. a there's a guy on there named Jughead, yeah, and it's they they call him Juggy. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. did you ever wear a crown? Uh, every day. <laughs> I love it. I'm a big Archie fan. Yeah. So when you bring that up, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. we're dating ourselves, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so. Absolutely. I used to read the comic books, and they don't really. You remember when the comic books used to be at the checkout stand? Yeah. Now it's like candy and magazines yeah. where it used to be. Yeah, a lot Archie less comic books for sure. Richie Rich. Did you ever get into Richie mm-hmm. Rich? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> that generation. What was your childhood like? Um, uh, I guess, you know, I want to say like everybody else, but not everybody else had the same. I don't know. Uh, single mom. I grew up in California and New York. Um, when did you come to Utah? uh the, the olympics 2002 oh okay so this is actually um 20 years this year that i've been wow. in utah in the uh utah nightlife 20 years now you're married i'm married is Six- this where you met your wife uh-huh oh cool you you were about to say 16 uh, 16 years we'll be married 16 years in, congratulations in, in may yeah we actually <laughs> met um the day before uh valentine's day so just a couple of days ago um that is um you know like our the day yeah yeah our first oh, anniversary so yeah so, so fe- cool. february 13th so we don't we don't celebrate valentine's day because of the um the, right. our, <laughs> our holiday the day before so that's way cool now you have kids uh-huh so you're a dad you're a dj mm-hmm. you work with cores mm-hmm. is there anything else that maybe i'm missing with that i don't know well, you curated Slap Lake City, right? How did that come about? Um, well, uh, it it really came about uh, like super organically because it came from something else. It came because uh, we um, the heavy hitters have a show on Shade Forty Five every Monday, and uh, I always include uh, Salt Lake artists, okay. um, Ogden artists too, just our whole area. Uh, every time so this particular show uh, I, I reached out a little bit further from my circle and put it out you know just like I'm just looking for new music to you know showcase on the show and um, it just turned out that uh, there was a lot of entries from all over the city um, 90% of the artists I never heard of them I never heard of them um, and it was uh, so much good music that I used a lot of it on the show and then um, I was like well what's happening with all of this music what are the, what are these guys and gals doing to get their music out because there's a lot of it and it's a lot of good music right. so um, basically I took a couple of the songs and put them on my shade 45 mix and then I did a um, a whole entire mixtape 
of all of all I don't want to say leftover, but the songs that um, didn't get used for Shade Forty Five that time, uh, I put them on a mixtape, and it just uh, people were feeling it, and I just kept doing it and doing it, and uh, it le- the mixtapes led to well. You guys want to perform? You guys want right. to like every, you know, so, so it went from doing one mixtape to like, to, to doing one showcase. And then the showcase had like half the artists that were on the mixtape. And then the other half of the artists were like, well, yo, if there's going to be another one, you know, we want to do it. I'd yeah. love to do it. And so I had, you know, the art, the mixtape had about 30 artists on it. So the first showcase had like 15 artists. And then the second, then it just, it just became a thing. Just, it just be, you know, more and more artists wanted to do the showcases, wanted to do the mixtapes and it just, um, spiraled out of control in a good way and now we we do it um at least once a month the mixtapes we don't do anymore um i may go back to doing them because there are a lot more artists and they like the um the placement and they like to be able to you know have a a place where their mixtape where their where their song is so i may go back to doing it but the, the 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 showcases started becoming they were they were once a month and then they started getting successful and then it became like twice a month. And then sometimes it was three times a month. We There was a, a couple months where we did it like every week. Yeah. So it just, I put the mixtapes on hold because the showcases started to be um, more prominent. And so that's kind of how it, that's exactly how it started. It really was just an organic thing. Just re- I was really looking to put artists on for Shade 45. And I, it just opened up the door to... Now I'm like working with probably like 75 artists that I prior to Slap Lake City didn't even know they existed in the, in our city, you know. So uh, say- not only not only have I built relationships on the music tip, but a lot of these guys um, and gals, uh, we've become like you know, homies. Yeah, <laughs> real friends and hang out and you know and have real conversations and and stuff. So um, it's become a it's become a family over the last two years. I know that that is where I found out about you. Mm-hmm. It's Slap Lake City. I don't remember my first, <laughs> my first one, but it was several years ago. And then the pandemic hit, mm-hmm. and then you were able to push through the pandemic. How were you able to curate events during the pandemic? Uh, well, as soon as uh, things started to look bright for us and they started opening things up and then allowing um smaller capacities with the um what is it the uh social the social distancing and stuff and it just was like well these are the the rules that they were given to us like if you want to do the shows everyone's got to like be separate and they got to be in groups there's no general admission they they so basically what it came down to was every artist had a, a table for their for their group yeah. for their for their people and they had to just so sit there and and abide by the guidelines of the pandemic so yeah. basically we just <laughs> rolled with the punches and whatever they allowed us to do they being the government and local government or whatever they we just uh push through everybody wanted to do it everybody wanted to keep rocking nobody wanted to stop and just that minute they gave us the opportunity to keep going we took it without giving away too much of your secrets Mm -hmm. (laughs) how do you manage to host an event like that and not charge people because usually when i go to slap lake there's not a cover right so getting through the door is free so it's like completely you're putting artists on Mm -hmm. you're allowing the community is this just a relationship you've built with soundwell or is this something that sponsors like how does that Um, come into play well the the why we don't charge or how we don't charge both okay why we don't charge is because uh we're not trying to make any money off of the artist uh, me personally the you know i put the event on so if it's something that you know i would be charging it would be something we try to disperse with all the artists but uh, there's so many artists you know there could be anywhere from 12 to 15 artists right. and then once we start charging right i don't want to i don't want to charge somebody's mom or somebody's dad, somebody's right. grandma, kids, you know, mm-hmm. wife. 
this is a community thing. We're not really here to make money. We're here to build a community. Music, yeah, because yeah, then, like I said, uh, this happened organically, and uh, we there was never an intention to make money. Because when 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 I presented the the, the business motto, yeah, to sound well, and I like you said, you know, the same thing. Why we don't charge? Uh, I've been working with Soundwell. Uh, since way before when it was uh, uh, Elevate. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, and Lake, Eff Lake Effect next door to Soundwell, it used to be the hotel. They used to, they right. used to be connected, the door in the back. If you ever go there, you'll see it. It's not, op it's not operational now, but you uh, could go back and forth between the clubs. So I used to work there, and I used to be the entertainment director over there. So I used to book all the DJs and all the acts and oh, everything. Okay. So I've had a relationship with um, Brian, Chad, and Brad, and Vaughn, and Joey, and those guys for 15 years. Wow. So... When I presented them, you know, with the idea of what I wanted to do, and they're like, "Okay, cool," you know, because they're a their business, you know. Yeah. So they're like, "Well, what do you want to charge?" And I was like, "Nothing. I don't want to charge anything. You guys just make whatever you guys make at the bar, and um, you know, to cover you guys' expenses." So basically, they don't make any money on it. You know, they charge, you know, for services, but at the end of the day, a lot of times to operate such a big place like that. Um, like the bar doesn't cover, right. you know, so they respect me enough and they respect me enough to, to know what I'm doing for the community that they don't charge me and they don't charge people and they do it. Um, you know, be, like I said, cause I've built a relationship with them and, um, yeah, they're just, will, they're just willing to just work with me and, you know, it's, it's, um, I guess when you just have those relationships, you know, yeah. like. I don't know. because you're a dope uh, guy and well, you're building just, community. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's not really to have to do with that. It's just, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just more of, you know, the business that we're presenting, the businesses we're not charging because we don't want to make money on these artists and make money on their families, you know. It's, uh, it's just not what, something I'm interested in doing. It's just uh, it wasn't the idea behind it. So where did it get, Where did it get its name? Um, well, slap, you know, people are like, oh, that shit's slapping, right? Yeah. So I just took that and just... Lake City. Yeah, slap Lake City. I love yeah. that. So for those of you that don't know, Slap Lake City is a showcase of local and extended artists that perform locally. How do they get put on? What's the best way to get uh, in touch just, with you? Um, they can send a submission to uh, slaplakecity at gmail.com. That's probably the best way. And um, just go from there. What's criteria? MP3? Yeah, MP3. You want stems? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. MP3 is fine. Just, a, just like your most current song. I'm not going to say your hottest song because I would imagine everybody feels like, you know, their song is the hottest. You know, yeah. So it would be <laughs> rhetorical to say, send your hottest song. You know, just send your most current song that you're working. And awesome. And that's go from there you have another event on saint patrick's day march 17th is the next slap lake mm -hmm. city super excited for that so make sure you guys tap in with that it's at soundwell in downtown salt lake city always at soundwell slap always. lake city is always that's the <laughs> that's the home slap lake city the soundwell is the home for slap lake city it'll, it'll never be anyone we've i've done a lot of other showcases at other clubs um but uh they've been down since the beginning and uh, we kind of have an agreement that even if I do showcases somewhere else, uh, which I do, I do them in Park City and I do them at other places around the city, um, that it's uh, it's just a, it's another it's a, we just call it something else. So when did you start DJing? Um, like the year. I just whenever you first started um, to scratch or, you know, put mixtapes together, spin records. Uh, probably like uh, 95, 96. Really? Yeah. What made you want to be a DJ? <laughs> uh, um, well, hip hop has always it's been a way of life for me. So out of all the elements, like the DJ on stage, you know, you just see the DJ perform, you know, performing with the group and he or she, she controls everything. You know, they control right. everything, the music, the crowd, literally everything. Yep. If, they're, if you, the vibe. you know, if you don't, if you're an artist <laughs> and you don't have a DJ, you don't have a show, you know, 
Like you can, of course, you can plug in an iPod or, you know, or have the this, same. have this, have the sound guy, <laughs> you know, playing my shit or whatever. But like, um, I've always said this, man, if you, if you don't, if you don't have a DJ in it at, at, for your live show, it's, uh, it's definitely something you, you gotta, you gotta have a DJ for your live show. So, uh, other than that, that's, that's how it came across, you know, just, uh, being a hip hop fan and just seeing the DJs for my favorite groups, um, you know, all my favorite groups have a DJ that's um, either, you know, the, the main member of the group or actually, you know, like the groups that have, you know, like Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock, you mm. know what I mean? Eric B and Rock Kim, like these guys, you know, like then you have groups like Run DMC and that don't have the name, but, you know, obviously Jam Master J is, you know, one of the main members. So, like, all those groups from, like, the 80s and 90s and, of course, Gangstar, Dilated Peoples, you know, all these groups, they all have a DJ that's, like... Household. Prominent, yeah. you know, it's, like, with with without, you know, any of those guys that I named out, like, without Babu, there's no Dilated Peoples. Without Premier, there's no Gangstar, right. you know, and the list goes <laughs> on and on. So, like... You know, if you don't have a DJ, it's seriously something to consider out there. And, you know, it's not a shot to anybody that doesn't have a DJ. But, um, you know, shout out to the artists that do have their own DJs. It's a, I it's think a, that's it's great a, it's advice. A statement. What other advice would you give to upcoming artists as far as like having a hit record or maybe working with DJs? Uh, I see the, the biggest thing. I mean, I don't like have like a lot of advice because... Um, I don't know who am I to give advice, but one thing is for sure, um, just in, invest in yourself because nobody else is, nobody ever will. You got to invest in yourself before somebody else will invest in you. Like anybody that's ever got signed by a label, it's because they had invested in themselves independently, which put put them on the radar of, a, of the bigger labels. And that's always how it works whether you're a big soundcloud rapper or whatever like you still got to pay you got to pay um whether it be you know sponsored ads or promotions merch you know whatever it is like you gotta you you gotta you gotta pay you got to invest into yourself and to you know to you know hopefully get a return and um one uh that's just something i always tell people like you gotta you gotta spend money to make money absolutely and Investing that's and that's not important. it's not even in music it's just in any business like you have to invest in yourself to to grow you know whether you're a you know a hot dog stand and you want to be a <laughs> restaurant later on you know right. you gotta you know you gotta make that money save invest into yourself buy bigger and better equipment and the same thing goes for music you got to invest in yourself and do 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 everything and everything digitally um guerrilla marketing videos um placements um because regardless of what people tell you those radio placements aren't free <laughs> no um, they're not <laughs> and and just um you know just all that stuff you know you just really just got to invest in yourself whatever uh wh whatever by any means necessary and, you, and the ones that do are, are usually the ones that are successful and the ones that don't, you know, it's just like just going, just going in circles, just doing this, doing the same thing. You got to, you got to, you got to, you know, broaden it and get outside of the box and get outside of your market. And, you know, if, you know, for instance, like you, if there's a market you're trying to break into, you know, uh, spend some money to advertise your music in that market. Buy a, buy a sponsored ad, you know, if you're trying to break into L.A. or New York or Texas or wherever it is that you're trying to break into, buy a sponsored ad for that market and market your music to the demographic and the area that you're trying to market to. I think that's great advice. Um, if, you're, if you're going out of town and you got a show, um, you know, pay for a sponsor, get a, get a sponsored ad and put it in the area or you know, put your or sponsored ad for your music if you have, you know, if you're going out of state or even if uh, you're going out of the area, you know, say you're a Salt Lake artist and you're going to Ogden or you're a Salt Lake Ogden artist and you're going, 
south for some reason they have an event you can buy a sponsored ad for ogden for orem for layton for park city wherever i see people going to idaho and doing shows in idaho you know you can anywhere you can you can pick and choose where you want your your marketing dollars to go so if you're going there you should try to let people know that you're going there in other ways besides obviously the you know on instagram if you if you ever notice on instagram if you go to post a flyer and it's got all types of dialogue on it all types of pictures all types of images it doesn't the picture doesn't go as as far because if you look at the top Instagram scanning your image and when they scan your image and they see that that you're posting something that appears to be an advertisement they slow down your out your your algorithm but then if you just post like a regular picture that flies like the gates are open you get tons and tons of more likes so a lot of times um like I'll, I'll post a picture of of myself and then i add in you know in in you know like where i'm going to be this weekend because the 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 in the algorithm gets slowed down when you post like an advertisement so because <laughs> instagram and facebook they want you to pay yeah they want those so they when when they when they scan your image and they see oh okay well this is something that they're trying to make money off of uh well we want to make money off you so they slow your algorithm down interesting going back to 95 96 talking about investing in yourself do you remember what your first rig was uh yeah i still have it really still have is this, that the same I rig still you have the tur- i still have the same the same two turntables um the mixer i don't have anymore but um my second mixer i still have wow. my first mixer i don't have because it was like a junky mixer that came with the turntables i bought it off somebody so i bought the turntables and the mixer and then i I got rid of the mixer and then, then the, the, so my, so I, I guess like the first one that I actually purchased, I still have it. So that the, the mixer that I got came with the turntables. And, um, so yeah, I, I have my very first setup. I still have, it. I still have, it. and that's, it's full, it's fully functional. That's awesome. <laughs> blow through needles. Huh? <laughs> Do you blow through needles? Yeah. Well, when you use, um, I use, I used to, I used to, but now on, when you use like Serato, you're not like, I mean, you're still DJing, but it's kind of hard to explain. Like the needles, they get they get burnt out, but it's not like when you use regular vinyl. So they still, even like the older needles, still still work. Okay. So if you weren't in this line of work as a DJ, what career would you be pursuing? Shit, I don't know. Um, I'll probably be a fucking WWE wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. Same name. I don't know what I would be. I don't know. I don't know what my name would be, <laughs> but I, yeah, I mean, I would headlock juggy. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Why WWE? Why not like UFC or, uh, well, cause UFC wasn't around when we were yeah, kids. That's true. So that's true. I don't, I was, I've, I've always been, I was literally birthed into a wrestling family. So I've, I've been, um, watching wrestling since literally since I before I was born, you know, in my your mom's favorite wrestler of all time, yeah. Sting. Really? Uh-huh. Wow. Now, Without Sting a doubt. now because I feel like they switched to Sting was. Well, he's yeah. I mean, he's been he's re you know reinvented himself. You know, several so he, times. Absolutely. Yeah, he's still <laughs> here now. He's in AEW. Um, but yeah, uh, Sting's always always been my guy. That's awesome. I was the Bushwhacker Brothers. All right. Like that was that's that not was a bad my choice. Crew, except for that's they're not, not around choice. anymore. Right. So it's like you know, <laughs> what do you feel is the biggest deal breaker on a job? Whether it's DJing, whether it's in marketing. Hmm. It, I mean, deal breaker as far as like never working with somebody again or never working or not actually doing the gig i mean i guess it would have to be bad business or um yeah i i I don't know i guess it would have to be i mean you, you i mean usually i for the sake of other people i tough out the gig and just if if i'm dealing with shitty people then i just don't work with them again because maybe somebody somebody booked me for an event right but so but the person that i'm dealing with isn't somebody that i would necessarily deal with again 
the people who I'm coming to entertain shouldn't be, um, what's the word? They should, you know, shouldn't they shouldn't be at fault, right? Because this yeah. person. So, like I said, I just tough it out. Um, you know, in this line of work, <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm DJing. It could be worse, you know. So yeah. I try not to like bitch and complain because I really I really love my job, and then I. Uh, <laughs> there's just not really a lot of room to complain. So I'm not going to sit here. Yeah. I just, uh, I just, I mean, you just take things with a grain of salt. And if somebody just does bad business and I usually, like I said, I usually, usually just tough it out and just not work with them again because, uh, usually it looks bad on the performer. Absolutely. Because, the other people don't know what's happening behind the scenes. So if for whatever reason I'm dealing with this, an event planner or a promoter or whatever, and they're just hard to work with, then why, why risk? I don't know. Just dealing with, you know what I mean? Just anything. So I just put up with it. It's only a couple of hours and I don't have to do with it again. I'm an independent contractor, so I get to pick and choose who I work with. I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, I don't have to, you know, every Friday show up to this one place. You know, I'm not obligated to do shit. So right. if people don't, you know, if there's not, a, if there's not a mutual agreement or mutual respect, then I just, I just leave. You know, okay. I'm just, I'm too old to be dealing with any like <laughs> politics <laughs> like that. Yeah, there's just so much going on, you know, for me to have to deal with anything like that. So that being said, I see that you're a resident DJ at the cabin in Park mm -hmm. City. Um, you have Slap Lake City as mm -hmm. well. You also have a new club coming. The grand opening is March 5th and it's called Dubai. Yeah. So you're working in these clubs. Do you ever do private events? All the time. How would someone aspire to hire you? Or? Uh, they just got to reach out. Just give me all the information and just go from there, really. Yeah, I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, I don't have a manager or a um, management company. So when you go to book me, you're dealing with me direct and you're going to hear, hear, you know, whatever it is I'm going to tell you, right, about yeah. the event and pricing and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I, do, I do weddings, corporate events, local showcases dive bars <laughs> open for pitbull at usana i mean i do big small things and i try not to alienate myself to you know doing just one thing or, or you know st one thing or the other just staying open to doing all types of all types of shit I, like i said I'll, I'll dj a dive bar and then the next day i'll dj some upscale restaurant you know like I don't really, it's really just about the relationships and working with people and working at places and having good business and having good energy. That's basically what it comes down to. It's never, it's never yeah. about the money. I mean, obviously the money's got to be right, but, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's more or less just like, like it goes back to the Sandwell situation, you know, just 15 year relationship. Those guys are like family to me. So, you know, when I reached out to them and told them what I wanted to do, they were like, all right, cool, let's do it. There's nothing, you know, they make their money in other places. So they're happy to give back to the community as well. Given this industry and what we deal with behind the scenes and on stage, are there any myths or false understandings about being a DJ that you want to debunk? Yeah, people probably think that we bag chicks every single night. And that's <laughs> a thousand percent not true. <laughs> the ones that actually stick around till the end like, of the oh, show probably, and the lights got, on. You probably and... got you probably got girls lined up. Man. <laughs> the only girl I got lined up is the waitress looking for my, me to clear my bar tab. That's the only girl I have lined up at the end. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, no, I don't. I don't think there's really any myths. Really, that's okay. probably that's really probably the only one. That's, I I honestly get that a lot. Of people <clears throat> people you know say that like. You've been married for so long. How do you? How do you? Um. <laughs> how do you manage being a dad, a husband, and and I call you an innovator because you're doing what other people aren't. How do you manage all that? Um, from time to time, it gets hard. You just got to um, you just got to just find the balance and just um, and just stick to it. You know, just you got to make time for everybody. Three kids, a wife. 
10 different venues that I'm dealing with, you <laughs> right. know, and then of course, you know, you, you know, the cores and then dealing with on top of cores, you know, I'm dealing with, you know, 50 to a hundred accounts. So, I mean, yeah, it's just, um, it's just, uh, you know, just piecing it together as we go along, you know, I mean, I really wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for my wife because she, uh, you know, she sacrifices a lot for me to go out there and do, do what I do. So really, I mean, it's a, it's a team effort, you know, if, if it wasn't for her, I mean, I don't, I don't know what I would, what I would be doing. So that's such a great thing to have as a team. Um, when it comes to your career and you can pass on this question if you want, but what would you say is your biggest failure that you've had thus far? And what did you learn from it? Um, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I have any, any failures. I think they're just, uh, I just consider them like, like bumps in the road. I don't know. I never, I don't, I'm, I'm still here after 25 years. So I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to say, you know, like, I don't know, something that didn't work. You know, a lot of, you know, you, you, you throw things against the wall to see who stick and a lot of, a lot of, you know, club nights or parties, theme nights that didn't work. But as far as failures, I don't know if I really, if there's anything like that I actually like failed on, you know, not to like toot my own horn. Cause I just think, I don't know. I just, I'm here, I'm thriving. So I don't know. I don't know. I just, uh, a lot of some, some things didn't work over the years, but I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if I could ever say I failed at something. I really like that because I feel like mentality and how we process mm -hmm. things that happen to us propel us forward or right. hold us back. So I really like that you don't see If I it. wasn't, I think if I wasn't DJing <clears throat> and, and we were having this conversation and I didn't like give it up and I just like, you know, like disappeared off of the scene or what, you know, whatever. And it was like, all right, well, I fail. What did I do wrong? But like I said, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I ever failed at anything. Um, just a couple, you know, a couple of things here and there throughout the years didn't work or maybe they were premature ahead of the time. But yeah, I don't, I don't think I, um, you know, without tuning my own horn, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I failed at anything. I love that though, because perception is reality. Yeah. And if you feel like you're a failure, then yeah, you know. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. What do you think is your favorite memory in your life? My favorite memory in my life, um, I'll say when each one of my kids were born, because I, there's just mm -hmm. like a story behind every single, like literally every single one of them. Whether it was one of them was like late at night, and we had like a guest DJ at Elevate. And I had to like drop them off at the hotel and then rush. My wife's water broke at the house. So she had somebody else took her to the hospital. So I'm like rushing at three in the morning and trying to like make it, you know, cause like she were water broke. So it could have been at, <laughs> yeah. any, at any time. Um, so I think, yeah, I think all, all of my kids um, being born, there was a, there was like a, some type of, story behind yeah. you know like <laughs> my i remember like my mom she was she was there for all of my kids to be born and one of the one of the kids my firstborn uh he literally was like stubborn and didn't come out he wouldn't come out he wouldn't come out and like the minute he the minute my mom walked into the room like within 60 seconds he, my wife delivered him Oh, wow. And yeah, so it's like now because not because of that, but there's just like a really strong relationship between my oldest son and my mom. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So like each one of my kids, there's just like a really like <laughs> trippy story behind, you know, like the, the birth of, of them. So, yeah, I think uh, overall, um, personally, uh, those are those are big, big moments. Any fun memories as a DJ you want to share? Um. Shit, man, there's been so many over the years. <laughs> I can years. only imagine. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite ones out here uh, was, it was a long time ago. And it was actually uh, right after uh, ODB died. Mm. And um, uh, Wu-Tang, they did their like reunion show at Rock the Bells. And then they ended up doing like a, a small like reunion style tour. Because after ODB died, they didn't do any shows. Right. 
Um, and then they came here and they did the depot and it was, it was sold out and there was no opening act except for me. It was just me and Wu Tang and they're, um, notoriously known for being late, uh, notoriously known for, uh, members not showing up. No, but okay. nobody, no, nobody, <laughs> no, nobody knowing which of the members are going to come. Um, so I did it and of course, you know, I, whatever it was, I think I had like a, a 90 minute opening set and then the, the event, the, um, the guy who's running the show comes up and he's like, hey, they're running a little bit behind. Not everybody's here yet. Can you keep playing a little bit longer? And I was like, yeah, no problem. So, you know, if you've ever been to a Wu-Tang show or a diehard, you know, a hardcore hip hop show, <laughs> the crowd can get a little restless at a little times. Anxious. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, you know, the, the prolonging the show 30 minutes later, he comes back and he's like, they're, they're still, still waiting for a few of the guys to come. Can you, can you keep playing? And I was like, yeah, no problem. I'll keep playing. I'll keep playing. Do what I do. Trying to get the crowd, you know, entertained yeah. and trying whatever. So um somebody somebody threw something at me and um so i stopped the show and was like hey man listen i'm a diehard wu-tang fan like you guys you know it's not me keeping them from coming here right. you know like they'll be here don't fucking throw anything at yeah. me <laughs> like i promise you the people around you will fucking tell on you and they were already like pointing <laughs> at the guy you know what i mean and i was like look i'm out. like they're already pointing you out bro like don't do that, man. Like, yeah. um, like I'll come out there. <laughs> like, I'm not the one for that. So, like, Let let's keep, let's track. keep, let's keep, let's keep this down. Let's keep the throwing of the shit down to a minimum, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, and then so the guy from the depot comes up. And he's like, "Is everything okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, everything's great. Everything's great." So he's like, "All right, just a few more minutes, a few more minutes," and then finally, like, um. I don't know if you've ever been to the Depot, but oh, they have yeah. they have a um, their their backstage area. They have a they have a huge freight elevator, um, so like just like it, like they didn't close the the um, the, the the mezzanine. They didn't no, they didn't close the curtain on the side yet. Oh, okay. So as I'm DJing, like it opens up and like it's just like it's a, it's really bright when it opens up and like it opens up and then just like an army like you know they all come out of the fucking elevator and i'm just like looking over my right shoulder and i can see and i'm like my first and then my initial reaction was like fuck finally, finally. you know like <laughs> And then, of course, and then they, they close the curtain, right? And then they close the curtain, so they're just back there. They're just back there. And I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of, like, waiting for them to, like, pull me and be like, okay, yeah. they're ready. So, like, it's like another 30 minutes goes by. And then, so finally the, the stage hands come out and then, you know, they, you know, unplug and they pull my stuff to the side. And then, uh, and then I, I, um, I go off to the side of the stage um, and I just walk right into, like, the middle of their, like, pregame okay like right they were like all getting ready to like come out to to perform and they're all you know getting their minds right and getting everything ready and they're just like oh man because they had been standing there for 30 minutes so they were like oh man you killed it man you killed it thank you so much bro sorry we were late man you know was, <laughs> and i was just like man you don't even have to apologize you know so it was that that was pretty cool it was um you know, you you as a fan, you you you've definitely witnessed a Wu Tang show. And you've witnessed them be late. You've witnessed members not show up, and then on top of all of that, every single one of the members were there. Wow. Every one of them, obviously, not ODB, but all of them were there. So it ended up just being like a real like legendary show from start to finish. That's so beautiful. That's got to be. And I'm Wu Tang's my number one, number one group of all time. So to to be able to be a part of that and, and to like. You know, share share the sh stage with them, and then share a little time with them after was uh, was was big for me. So, given everything that you've done in your life, who you are as a man, a DJ, all that, if you had one word to describe yourself, what word would that be? Authentic. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Just a couple more questions, and we'll wrap this up. Um, what do you feel like are the best resources that have helped you along your career and your journey as a DJ? Um, 
like I said earlier, you got to invest in yourself. So you're, you, you, you're always going to be your number one resource, right? You got to, you know, cause no one, no one else is going to support you. Like you're going to support you. And, um, and really just, uh, having people around you who actually do support you and want to see you do good because, you know, you'll, you'll have people around you, but that doesn't necessarily, they want to, they want you to do good or want to see you do good. People have ulterior motives. They have, you know, envy, jealousy. So really if, uh, you know, just if you're going to do it on your own, do it on your own. But if you're going to have people around you, make sure you have people around you who are, um, you know, going to contribute people who are going to bring something to the table and not just show up to the table to eat, you know? Right. Um, uh, and that's, that's really it. Cause you know, as a team, everyone's got to contribute. So, and, uh, it doesn't always work out that way. That's so you just gotta be, you just gotta be, yeah, you just gotta be, you gotta, <laughs> you know, have, have the right people around you. And sometimes you figure out that some of the people that around you aren't, you know, the right fit for what you're trying to do. And, uh, that's okay too. You what know, you gotta, you got to, not everybody, not everybody can come along for the ride. Mm. And it's not true. every, not everybody wants to come along for the ride, even though they may be there riding with yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. They don't want to put the work in or they don't want the. Or they're just low key haters. Yeah. You know, yeah, there could be a lot part. of different things. <laughs> so you just got to make sure you just got the right people around you and the people who actually, uh, you know, support you. Cause I see a lot of artists that complain, you know, like about not getting support or people around them, family, friends that don't support. Just um, focus on the people who do, because um, not everybody, like I said, not everybody, even your own blood relatives are gonna support you. Some people have hidden agendas and hatred for no reason at all, and uh, it's unfortunate. So it you gotta, you just gotta get past all that shit and um, worry about yourself in the end you know I love because it. <laughs> uh back to square one no one's no one's gonna no one's gonna put you first you got to always put yourself first so how did you end up a heavy hitter i ended up a heavy hitter because like i said when i was um the entertainment director at, at um before soundwell was soundwell when it was elevate and hotel i was uh i was booking a bunch of the heavy hitters i booked like camillo felly fell dj enough cast one eddie one i booked a bunch of the heavy hitters because i i respect what they do and um you know they're you know really known djs you know, a lot of them are known in both the hip-hop and the latin world and that's a, a big thing here in in the clubs is you know hip-hop and latin whether you know you see it all latin night or not latin night because i play a lot of reggaeton in my in my like club sets club yeah. club sets uh and it's um you would think it's a latin night sometimes when i <laughs> dj when it's not so yeah i just i just brought the djs that I knew would would smash it in this market and um it was like almost every time I brought one out they every no they never been here before and then they just saw how I was moving in the city and after like I don't know like 2 years of booking them and bringing them consistently um like Camillo called me one day and was like we like what you're doing out there in Utah. We like how you're moving out there. And, uh, I don't know if you ever considered it, but if you, you know, we, we would, we, we want to have you on heavy hitters if that's something you're interested in. And I was just like, me? And he was like, yeah, man, we, uh, we, we, we like, we, you know, we see what you're doing out there and we think you're the perfect fit for what we're, what we're doing. And I was like, Oh, all right. Yeah, I'd love to be a part of heavy hitters. You know, I've always, I guess, I mean, I was booking them because I respected them, and you know, loved the way they DJ, but never had any intentions of, you know, trying to be down with them or anything. It just, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just everything's organic. You yeah. know, it's just when you just when you when you when you have good intentions and 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 you're authentic about everything, shit just shit you know just it aligns for yeah. sure <laughs> comes together so, you know it's another thing i tell people it's just, just always better just to be honest man just to be honest be upfront be be truthful with people 
you know and not everybody not everybody does not everybody does it and you know usually the people who 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 don't conduct business in the right way um they don't they don't last very long in our business mm. <laughs> so um word travels fast but bad yeah. news travels faster <laughs> Yeah, that I always I said well, another thing I always say, I always say good news travels fast, but bad news travels a lot faster. Uh so yeah, I just I mean, I just like I said, I, I was booking them just because I really loved them and I knew that they I knew they would do, get the job done out here and and doing so it just led to something else. So it's beautiful. Is there anything that we left out? Um, I don't know. This, or that this you want to add? This is, this is your thing. This is your thing. Um, no, not really. Just, uh, you know, if, you, if you're rocking with us out here in Salt Lake City, check out the Slap Lake City Showcase. Um, all the past Slap Lake City mixtapes are still on my Mixcloud page. So Mixcloud backslash DJ Juggy, the heavy hitter shows on Shea 45. Um, your yeah. Twitch? Uh, yeah, I'll get to that in a oh. second. You know. <laughs> uh, Shea45, you guys know, Sirius XM. Shout out to um, you know, Big Marshall and Rosenberg and everybody, man. They um, And the whole Goliath management and everybody that believes in the heavy hitters. So, you know, we're, we're rocking every Monday on, you know, Eminem Station. Um I don't it's it's in the it's in the high millions of subscribers for XM so it's a it's a huge deal for us and not only us but all the DJs that do do shows on Sirius XM it's a it's a huge deal and a huge blessing to be able to uh reach people all across the world with one stroke <laughs> um and then yes Twitch you guys could hit me on Twitch it's um online streaming I do a show I used to do it a lot more regularly um, but I've been crazy busy with just everything going on that I haven't been as regular on there. But I'm usually on there Saturdays and Sundays in the morning and like every other Monday. There's a couple other times just like randomly throughout the week. Uh, it just varies. And then let's say Shea 45, Heavy Hitters. Um twitch socials court and then the, the court and then the cores light too make sure you guys are fucking drinking silver bullets out there <laughs> last question i yes. ask all my guests if you were me and you were asking yourself the questions what question would you ask i would ask me how do i do everything that i do and my answer would be naps. Naps are very important. I wouldn't be able, besides my wife, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without those power naps. So that that's my that power naps are my are my self care. That's my self care power naps. So that's what I would ask myself: How do I get every, get everything done in in such a small window every single day? <laughs> and that's how I get it done with. Naps. You need that little recharge every every day, every day, or try to get that every day. I love that. <laughs> Power naps are the secret sauce, but don't sleep on Slap Lake City. No, Make sure you guys you come out St. Patrick's Day, March seventeenth, and then stop by the grand opening for Club Dubai yes. on March fifth. Dubai is right now. If you're in Salt Lake, you know where it is. It's right next to Ibiza. Uh, it's actually the same owners of Ibiza. Ibiza is um, number one latin club in salt lake city so they're opening a sister club right next door and it's going to be hip-hop so be a lot more opportunities happening over there and um our grand opening saturday night and um i'll be um i guess the uh i guess i'm i guess the proper terminology i'm the entertainment director for saturday nights or the, wow. the talent director for saturday nights so top tier Saturdays. Morning Cup of Culture. We don't say goodbye. We build communities and make music. If y'all want to tap in, hit me up morningcupofculture at gmail.com. Stay tuned. Every Friday we drop a new episode. We also have a 501c3 getting ready to launch. It's called Cup of Culture Foundation. Make sure y'all stay tapped in. Mm -hmm.